Hello, welcome to my Minnie Mouse Frankie t-shirt hack. So today I'm going to run through making the t-shirt from start to finish. Um, so I'm using the pattern, the Frankie t-shirt by Tilly and the Buttons. And it's in the Tilly and the Buttons stretch book that was published last year. And I really liked this pattern, but I did think that the neckline was a little bit high. So I've modified it to have the Agnes top, which is also another Tilly and the Buttons pattern neckline. So this is an example of actually one I've made up already. The Frankie t-shirt is a raglan sleeve top. I've made this with short sleeves and I've obviously changed the neckline to the Agnes top. So to change the neckline what I did is I actually made one of the Frankie t-shirts up and I folded it in half like this and put the Agnes pattern on top of it. Took into account the seam allowance at the top here and then just drew um, with a heat dissolvable pen on the neckline just to mark um, where I wanted the Agnes neckline to be instead of the Frankie one. And I did that both sides and then the back piece is the same as well. Um, and then this is the pattern I've made lots of t-shirts with so I thought what better time to make a Minnie Mouse version of my Frankie top. So let's get started. So this fabric I picked up from eBay and I'll leave a link to the listing down below but there are lots of sort of versions of spotty fabric that you could use so it looked a little bit like Minnie Mouse. So what I'm going to do is make the main body of the Frankie t-shirt out of this dotty fabric and then I'm going to do the sleeves in black and so the neckline as well. So first of all I've laid out my fabric so that I've got the warp going along the length of my cutting board and then I've folded over enough to get my pattern piece on and I've made sure that I've got the same width here as to here so that I know that it's along the length of the grain so I'm going to lay my pattern pieces onto the material so I use my rotary cutter for this what I normally do is lay my pieces out on the fabric, all of them, so that I make sure that there's plenty of fabric um, to make whatever I'm going to make. Um, but for this I know I've got absolutely loads, so I'm going to cut the front panel and then the back panel from that side of the material separately. So before I take the pattern piece off the material I'm going to mark where the notches are and this is a heat dissolvable pen but also the marks should be in the seam allowance as well. Um, so there we are, that's the first piece done. I'm going to keep those pieces together. I did forget to say that I actually cut those on the fold. I'm just marking the notches with a heat dissolvable pen and I'll keep the pattern piece with the piece cut out so I know which piece is which for now. So both pieces have been cut on the fold and now I just need to cut the sleeves and the neckline. I've got a really small piece of fabric that I'm going to attempt to get two sleeves out of. I have got another piece, um, so I can use that if I do run out. I'm just going to see how it goes. I know the grain line of the fabric is this way.
for the second piece I need to cut it the other way up so that I get a matching pair of sleeves. I'd normally cut this as one because I'm short on fabric. Oh, look at that, that's so close. sleeves done so I've only got these scraps left I am actually going to do a pieced neckline that's the length of the grain down that way so I can cut two pieces but just add an additional seam allowance There we are, so I've cut the neckline in two pieces and I'll just have the seams either side here and because it's black you won't be able to see it anyway. So that's made good use of my last bit of black fabric that I had. So the fabric I'm using is a jersey. So the neck band is actually supposed to be cut on the fold. I've just cut two with an additional centimetre and a half to allow for another seam allowance. Um, so there's my neck band ready and my pattern pieces. So I'm going to show you how the assembly is going to start. So there's my sleeves. It's quite easy to tell which is the front and the back with a raglan sleeve because of the shape of the neckline. So this is the back. This is the front. So when you're looking at your notches, the notches, when you've got two, it just means that's to the back of the garment. So it helps you remember which way is which. Some of the marks I've made are on the back of the fabric, so I need to check that. So this is how I'm going to join them together. So first of all, I'm going to do the front seams. So I'm going to put these in the position where they're going to be sewed on. I'm going to get some pins. So I'm using pins that are actually ballpoint ones, so that they're good for use with jersey. So I'm going to start pinning in the position of the underarm pit. And match up those notches. So I like to do all my pinning at once, so I'm actually going to sort of fold these over and put my back panel right sides together and pin it all together and then I can go over to the overlocker and do all my stitching all at once. So there's that side pin, I'm going to do the same for the other one. There we are, so I'm going to take this over to the overlocker and um, overlock the sleeves in. Now I'm over at the overlocker. I've re-threaded my machine with black thread because I'm going to do black top stitching on this anyway to match the black sleeves. Um, and I've just got my scrap of fabric. I'm going to check 
um, that it's stitching correctly and then stitch my raglan sleeves. So you can see it's inside out but I've done um, the raglan sleeves both sides and I'm going to keep it inside out and I'm going to put the side seams together and pin those um, before I overlock them. If I pin both sides then I can overlock them at once. So I've got both side seams pinned, I'm going to overlock those now. So the side seams are overlocked, I need to do the neckline now, so I'm going to first join my pieces in a loop, putting right sides together. So there we are, we have a loop. and. I'm going to pin that over so that the right side is on the outside so it's folded over. I'm going to pin it at both seams because that's at the halfway point. I'll trim this bit of overlock thread. And then I'm going to mark, I'm actually going to pin it so that it's pinned at the other quarter point. So I'm going to put these two pins together where the seams are. And I'm going to fold the material so I'm finding the next quarter on here, um, either side. It's easy to do it on the table. I've pinned that side to show the quarter mark and also pinned um, it, it folded over as well. There's a little bit fiddly. So I've now got four pins in there showing sort of divided into four quarters. I'm going to fold the piece over to put the pins that are closest together together and I'm going to pin in between each of those four now so I've got eight divisions all the way around. I now have eight pins in there, so it's divided into eight sections equally. 
and then I'm going to do the same for the neckline. So I'm just going to chop off this excess overlock thread and I'm putting the sleeves over one another and finding the back point. centre back point and the centre front point and from those two divisions I can then divide it into eight pieces like the neckband. I'm going to put the centre back and the centre front together and mark the side which is on this one it's just off that seam line Once I've done the other side, that will be divided into four. You can just divide it into four if you like, but I just prefer doing it into eight so that it's easier to make sure your tension's equal. So now I've got four pins around the neckline, I'll put the two closest together and find the next point, which is actually the seam line, but I'm going to put a pin there anyway. And the front and the side pins together and put in another pin so that I effectively have eight all the way around. So I've got eight pins marking all the way around the neckline. I'm now because I've got two, two joins in this neckline, I'm going to space my joins so that they're halfway around so that I've got the seams this side and this side. And then I'm going to go along and match up each pin um, because there's, there's eight on each, I'll just find the next pin for each and pin those together um, to make sure that my neckline is equally spaced. I've just got the neckline pinned to the right side just on the inside there but it wouldn't matter if you've got it the other way around to be honest. Um, I'm now just going to check um, where the, which way the seams are going. Because my fabric on the shoulders is slightly thicker than the main body I'm going to pin my seam allowance towards the white side just because I think it'll sew better. There we go, it's time to overlock. So I normally start on the centre back seam, which is obviously the highest neckline is the back, and work my way around. When you're sewing your neckband on, I just pull it out slightly so that it um, stretches out to the length of the main garment. I'm going to actually um, thread the overlock thread on the end of a needle um, and just thread it into the stitches so that it definitely won't come undone. So I've just threaded it in, into the overlock stitches 
and trim the end off. I'm getting there slowly. So that's how it looks so far. I'm going to give um, the neckline a bit of a press and I'm going to start turning up the hems all ready for the cover stitch machine. I like to use this little plastic ruler just to measure inch and a half around the hemline so I can pin that hem up. Might be easier if I do it from the right way. So that's all pinned, I'll go and give it a press. So I've got my cover stitch out, I'm just going to check that it's stitching correctly.
There we go. I just want to grab um, the ends, thread them and just thread them into the work just to secure them nicely. There we go and I'm going to do that to the rest and then I should try it on. It's finished! So that's my Minnie Mouse or Disney inspired Frankie top with the Agnes neckline and I hope you enjoyed sewing along with me. Um, if you'd like to see more don't forget to like and subscribe and I shall see you in the next episode or little vlog. Bye!